Why your back hurts? The back is a complicated structure of vertebrae separated by discs, held together by ligaments and muscles. It must be flexible enough to provide a wide range of movements and yet strong enough to protect the spinal cord and the delicate nerve fibers which exit between each vertebrae. The proximity of the spinal cord and spinal nerve roots to the muscles and joints of the back is what makes a bad back so painful and so debilitating. The spine functions as a whole, so if we have mechanical disturbances in one part of the spine, even as far away from the low back as the neck, it can influence conditions in another area of the spine. Imbalances in the pelvis, problems in the sacroiliac joints, facet fixations, as well as joint restrictions in the mid-back and the neck, can contribute to the process of disc degeneration, weakening the joint and making it susceptible to injury. Back pain can be caused by any combination of sprained ligaments, strained muscles, herniated discs, and pinched nerves, any or all of which can lead to back pain. Of course your spine could be normal in every way and become injured in a fall, accident, or sports injury. Just as often, however, weaknesses from lesser, earlier injuries accumulate and compound as the years go by so that eventually the simplest of movements, for example, bending over to pick up your shoes from the floor, can have painful results. In addition, arthritis, poor posture, lack of exercise, weight gain, and even psychological stress can cause or complicate back pain. Most back pain is mechanical in nature. Less frequently back pain can also directly result from medical pathology such as kidney stones, infections, blood clots, bone loss osteoporosis and others. A complete history and a thorough examination can rule in or rule out a wide range of possibilities. Nerve pain. The possible causes of nerve disorders in the human body number literally hundreds but may be divided roughly into seven categories as follows. 1. Direct physical pressure such as from herniated discs, osteoarthritic changes, spinal stenosis. Often referred to as a pinched nerve. 2. The toxins of acute infective diseases such as diphtheria, shingles, typhoid fever, malaria, scarlet fever, septicemia. 3. Acute or chronic poisoning most commonly by lead, arsenic, mercury, copper and phosphorus. 4. Autoimmune disorders such as rheumatoid arthritis, celiac disease, myasthenia gravis. 5. Central nervous system disorders such as cerebral palsy CP, Parkinson's disease, multiple sclerosis MS. 6. Metabolic disease such as diabetes or alcoholism. 7. Nutritional deficiency. By far the most common of these that result in neck pain radiating into the shoulder, arm, wrist, and hand or lower back pain radiating into the buttock, hip, leg, or foot as direct physical pressure. When a patient suffering from a bad back receives a diagnosis of pinched nerve, the doctor is referring to direct physical pressure as the cause of the nerve pain. Pinched nerve. A pinched nerve occurs when too much pressure is applied for too long to a nerve by surrounding tissues such as by bones, cartilage, muscles, tendons, ligaments, spinal discs or rarely tumor. Everyone has at one time or another applied too much pressure to the funny bone in their elbow which is actually the ulnar nerve. This physical pressure disrupts the nerve's function causing pain, tingling free web content, numbness or weakness. Too much pressure applied for too long to a nerve along the spine results in much the same sensations. Of the seven broad categories resulting in nerve dysfunction only one, direct physical pressure, is properly referred to as a pinched nerve. The most common reasons for the direct physical pressure are as a result of the changes occurring with degenerative disc disease DDD, and or degenerative joint disease DJD. Nerve pain resulting from direct physical pressure is called an entrapment neuropathy because the nerve is trapped or pinched by some structure. This term helps to distinguish them from neuropathies resulting from infection or disease. Back surgery for back pain? Think again. If you suffer from back pain, including disc degeneration or a herniated disc, you may be considering having back surgery to give you some relief. Back pain can be severe, tempting us with surgery as a remedy. If you suffer from back pain, consider the study published in the August 2010 issue of Spine. Researchers found patients who chose a surgical solution worse off than those who used non-surgical approaches. Researchers studied a group of Ohio residents who were out of work due to back pain. 
All patients were part of the Ohio Workers' Compensation Program and their medical files were available to researchers. They examined 725 patients with lumbar fusion compared to workers in the program who had chronic lower back pain diagnoses but who had not received a lumbar fashion surgery. Researchers examined the state of the workers two years after either the injury itself if the patient did not have surgery or two years after the lumbar fusion surgery. Their findings should make you think twice about a surgical solution to back pain. Surprising, researchers found that those without surgery were more likely to return to work. After two years, 26% of those who had surgery had returned to work, compared to 67% of those who did not have surgery. Of those with surgery, 27% received a second surgery. The surgical patients were also more likely to be using pain medication at the end of the two-year period. Some patients continued using pain medications daily 41% of the surgery patients 76% of the surgery patients continued on pain medication. Researchers studied the records of 1450 patients in Ohio who were diagnosed with disc degeneration, disc herniation or radiculopathy. After two years, 26% of patients who had surgery returned to work, compared to 67% of those who did not have surgery. Among those who had back surgery, there was an increase of 41% in the use of painkillers, particularly opiates. Patients who sought pain relief with surgery ended up on pain-relieving drugs and were less likely to return to work than non-surgery patients. For non-surgical back pain relief, people turn toward chiropractics, acupuncture, physical therapy, exercise, and anti-inflammatory diets. Back pain is complex and we recommend a patient use every avenue at his or her disposal to reduce pain. However, one treatment that has been extremely effective is spinal decompression therapy, offered by chiropractors. It is likely to give you a great deal of relief find article, particularly when combined with a lifestyle that supports the health of your back. Sometimes back pain may cause a lot of discomfort in your everyday work from home duties. Follow these effective 10 tips and you will be able to work smoothly feeling healthy and good. Now is the time in 2020 where you are spending most of your time at home and it's already been more than 10 months since the pandemic hit us severely. There's no other alternative except to stay home and do our jobs, take care of home, family and practice the three. Wash hands, watch social distance and wear a mask. Though work from home opportunity comes as a new wave where rushing to office is no longer a routine and initially that was kind of welcome change. You set new rules for yourself, get a desk, set your PC or laptop and set timings to work online. Go on Zoom, Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp or cloud platform and start working, attend meetings with your boss, and do your job, similar to how you worked from your office earlier. 88% of companies have encouraged employees to work from home as a result of pandemic. Nearly 97% of organizations have canceled their travel plans. Now one in six U.S. workers, that is nearly 26 million people or more are working from home and in the near future, it is expected to grow to a greater number. This is in fact a welcoming development that is allowing the workforce to use technology from home and deliver work. This is where we can endow and convey our appreciation to technology. Having said that, the new work from home brought new health challenges and one of that is back pain. Whether a tiny apartment or a house, accommodating space for your work becomes a necessity as a part of your daily chore. Sometimes, you may even find your kitchen countertop, lounge chair or your bed as your workplace. Here comes a challenge and that is a healthy posture. For a short period of time, it may be okay, you need not worry and if it is for months, just like in this pandemic, remote work can in fact bring you a major health issue of back pain and you begin to realize that it may become a chronic pain. This is the most common thought process for millions of workers. You may encounter neck pain, cramps, cracking shoulders, bad back and such other mild body aches sometimes. What would you do at that time? How to get rid of these in the normal process of our routine. Here, there are finally themed 10 good tips that you can practice to stay safe from back pain and stay refreshed. By following these tips, you can safeguard your health and enjoy your work on a daily basis and take a quick short break in between to resume your work from home tasks. 1. Sit straight to view your system screen. 
place your laptop or desktop at a comfortable height and be seated in a well-positioned chair and sit straight. Place your keyboard and mouse to your front ensuring that your neck is facing your screen. If you are working on a laptop, support your back to rest your hands, arms and posture of the seat in a straight angle, so that you do not hurt your back. 2. Avoid eye strain. Avoid facing a window as you would be staring at the light and it is possible that glare on the screen would cause eye strain. Close the windows, shades or drapes and keep off from a glass table. 3. Put your neck straight to handle paper documents. Use a paper holder or if you are using an iPad, place it on a stand to read the docs. Never read from an iPad or papers that are flat on your table or your head will have to move constantly. 4. Comfortable height for your keyboard and mouse or touchpad. If you are using a laptop at a good height, use a separate keyboard and mouse. Ensure that you can use keyboard and mouse with your forearms and hands level straight, ensuring that your arm is close to the side of your body while you use the mouse. The purpose here is, avoid too much stretching or bending or turning frequently that causes strain to your neck thereby developing a backache. 5. Avoid using a soft wrist rest. Although it may appear that you are receiving good support, any compression beneath your wrist can increase the risk of carpal tunnel syndrome. 6. Interchange between typing, mousing and using voice input. While voice recognition is greatly in use and good for most text and emails, it allows your arms, wrists and hands time to rest. 7. Sit back in your chair. Avoid hunch forward in your chair and don't try to sit upright. The best relaxed posture is when your lower back curves in toward your belly and it puts the least pressure on the intervertebral discs in that area. When you lean forward, the lumbar spine bends out and that puts a lot of pressure on the discs. Make sure you can sit back in your chair so some part of your body weight gets the support by the chair back and sit close enough to comfortably reach your keyboard and mouse. If your chair does not offer good lower back support, use a cushion or rolled up towel behind your lower back. 8. Rest your feet flat either on the floor or a foot support while sitting. If your feet do not reach the floor, use a cushion or footrest. Be seated comfortably. Any pressure on thighs restricts blood flow to your lower legs and feet increases your risk of deep vein thrombosis. 9. Avoid too much of work sitting on bed. Bed appears attractive to work, experts say that it is not recommended. You may have to hunch over to view your screen and this causes a direct backache. Some of the common posture is that you sit on bed legs crossed or extended horizontally, supporting your laptop. If a bed is the only option you have, place a pillow behind your back to rest against the headboard and put your laptop on a cushion in your lap. Another alternative is to get a low table for the laptop that can go over your legs so you can type at a comfortable height without straining your neck. 10. Avoid too much of standing for computer work. Standing desks require long standing and sometimes it may appear as a better option to avoid backache. But it requires more energy than sitting and also puts a high strain on the circulatory system, legs and feet. You can stand to take calls for a while or stand computer technology articles, stretch and move around every 20 or 30 minutes to relax muscles. You can also take a walk to make a cup of tea or coffee or have a glass of water. But avoid working for hours while standing on your feet. It drains your energy levels. Conclusion Following these tips for your Soho, small office, home office, and you'll do great. Move around a little bit before you get back to your chair.